Welcome to Word Connect with Pastor Maxwell Ogaga, a teaching ministry where believers are trained to be established in the truth of God's Word. For more information and free downloads, please visit www.thepastormax.ng. Maintaining a consistent and disciplined fasting life. Everybody say, inconsistency lies the power. Say it one more time. Say, inconsistency lies the power. Now, one of the things we realize about life is this. Many people know what to do to excel. Many people know what to do to succeed. But not many people are consistent with it. Praise God. Come on. How many of us know that studying the word is good? Let me see. How many of you know that praying all the time is good? Come on. How many of you know giving to the kingdom of God is good? But come on. How many of you study all the time? How many of you pray all the time? How many of you know that vegetables and fruits are good for you? How many of you know ice cream is not good for you? But which one do you want all the time? Ice cream. So you see, the human nature will always lead you to do consistently what's not good for you. you write that down. The human nature will consistently lead you to do those things that are not what? Good for you. So for you to be able to do the things that are good for you, what are the two words you need? Discipline. Everybody say discipline. And what? Consistency. How many of you know if a driver cuts across you on the road, if you're driving and a driver cuts across you on the road, how many of you know the kind of words that are welling up in your spirit? What do you want to say? You want to curse them out. Am I right? Come on, come on. Even as a preacher, sometimes I feel those words. You just want to tell the guy, you know, you don't want to really say his, you know, but you want to say some words. How many of you know that's, those are easy words to say? But how many of you know the right word to say is actually to bless them? You know? But how many of you know you need to train your tongue to bless? Praise God. So, the Christian, and, and, I, and I, I noted this down, and I said this right. You cannot become a spiritually matured Christian if you're not disciplined and consistent in the things of the Spirit. It doesn't matter how long you stay in church. Do you know that a pastor can actually fight? <laughs> you know, after preaching a powerful message, he goes out there, somebody tells him something that is not right. You know what? The man can drop his suit and fight. And people would wonder, but he's a pastor. Yes. The fact that he's a pastor does not mean that he's perfectly grown. He has to also do the word just as you're doing the word. Are you following this now? So we're looking at, we've looked at what? Having a consistent word life. We've looked at having a consistent what? Prayer life. If I, if I were you, I'll get these messages and listen to them over and over again. Listen to me. If you listen to these messages constantly, you will develop consistency. There's no, there's no magic. And, and that's the way I teach people. I don't, there's no magic to it. There's no, there's no, one convention to it. There's no one impartation service to it. I mean, we've, we've been in this place and with the service team, we've prayed five hours stretch. But I mean, and you know, the week after we paid five hours stretch, what was happening to your prayer life? Man, you went into the bathroom, you spoke in tongues. You, you were cooking. You, in fact, you were about to cook and you left the food and you spoke in tongues. The question now is, this is July. You know what has happened? The consistency of not developing that thing has made your prayer life to go back to it was before you prayed five hours. So I'd rather somebody prays 15, 15 minutes consistently daily for 30 years than pray 10 hours and don't pray again. And you know the pride, the, 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 the flesh takes pride in that. Man, we did six hours. Six hours. The last six hours the man did was 10 years ago. But the flesh likes boasting in that. How many of you know that? Like you like boasting in what you have done before. You like boasting in the things you did. You know, if you constantly boast about the past, it means there's something lacking in your present. Write that down. If you constantly boast about the past, it means what? There is something lacking in your present. In your present. When, when David boasted about the past, it was to encourage him to conquer the present. When you talk about your past... It is to inspire you for the present. Praise God. So we're talking about fasting. <laughs> now, there are two extremes to fasting. 
Okay? There are two extremes to fasting. Praise God. All right. What are you writing? If you constantly boast about the past, it means there's something lacking about the present. Have you written that down? You, the, I, I, and I'm developing this in my teaching, teaching, teaching style. Now, I don't used to do it, but I'm doing it right now because I discovered that there are very important statements that people need to capture, especially when they come out by the Spirit. We need to document them and go back and meditate on them, praise God, and look over them again and build them into our life. Now, there are two extremes to fasting. So, like, I will always look at my, use my left hand and my right hand, okay? So, on my left hand, the extreme to fasting is this. If we want more power from God, if we want to do anything incredible for God, if we want to do this massive stuff for God, we have to fast. The other extreme is, Jesus has paid the price. Come on, are you following this? The other extreme is, Jesus has paid the price. There's no need to fast. Fasting is not emphasized in the New Testament, so nothing. We're living on that grace. We don't need to fast for more power. The greater one already lives inside of us. Do you know what? Both of them are wrong. I mean, the guys you have here are the guys who are doing the 40 days, the 80 days, the 120 days, I mean, climbing the mountain. The guys who are here are just the guys who, yeah, there's nothing about fasting. We can eat as much as we want to eat. we we'll still exercise power. But what's the middle of the road? You need to stay in the middle of the road. What's the middle of the road? Fasting does not change God. Fasting does not give you more power. Fasting disciplines your flesh. Fasting humbles your soul so that you can minister to the Lord effectively. I know that's shocking. And I, that's why I put it first. That fasting does not change God's mind. Somebody say, yeah, but in Nineveh, they fasted and God changed his mind. No, they repented. And they, they, with their repentance, they fasted. But God had told them that if you repent of your sin, I'll forgive you. What causes God to respond is repentance. You know, people always quote this scripture. If my people who are called by my name will do what? Will humble themselves and seek my face, right? You know, then they quickly just skip the next line and they say, they go to where the scripture says, I'll heal their land. But do you remember that's not all the scripture says? If my people who are called by my name will, you know, humble themselves and seek my face and do what? and turn from their wicked ways, then I will do what? So, it's not the fasting that alters the mind of God. It is the turning of your wicked ways. Repentance is what changes God's mind towards man in that sense. Are you following this now? Please, you need to follow this. Make sure you pay attention to this. So, let's look at some biblical examples of fasting. Number one, Jesus fasted when he was um, to start ministering. Luke chapter 4, verse 1 to 2. And the Bible says he was hungered after then. So we know he fasted. And, and, and um, I'm going to do, I think I'll do an extensive teaching on fasting. I'm just running through a lot of things now. But I really need to do an extensive teaching on fasting because there are a whole lot of fasting ideas that we have in the body that are not very accurate. So this is just a taster course. This is a small bite to keep you on. Okay, so Jesus fasted 40 days, 40 nights. <laughs> Nehemiah fasted when he was rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. Nehemiah chapter 1, verse, 5, verse 1. Nehemiah chapter 1, verse 4. David humbled himself for God when he was fasting. He fasted and he called it humbling himself before the Lord. Psalm 35, verse 13. Then in 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 17 and 23, he fasted for healing and miraculous intervention. Esther fasted for the whole situation. Mordecai and the Jews, they all fasted for God to intervene. Esther chapter 4, verse 3. The early church fasted. Am I too fast? Okay. Jesus fasted. Luke 4, 1 to 2. Nehemiah fasted. Nehemiah 1, verse 4. David humbled himself in fasting, Psalm 35, verse 13, and 2 Samuel 12, 17 to 23. Mordecai fasted, uh, sorry, Esther fasted with Mordecai and the Jews, Esther chapter 4, verse 3. The early church fasted before the appointed leaders and elders, but the word used that there is that they ministered to the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. That they ministered to the Lord. So we have um, Acts chapter 13, verse 2, and Acts chapter 14, verse 23. 
Jesus expected his disciples to fast, but Jesus did not command it. There was no commandment from the Lord that the disciples should fast. But he says, when you fast, Matthew 6, 16. So if I say, when you fast, it means I expect you to fast. Okay? So there was an expectation from Jesus about fasting, but it was not like a direct commandment. And in the New Testament, after the, especially in the Gospels, you do not see a lot of emphasis on fasting. Because, because it's very simple. In the Old Testament, they had this sense that God was far from them and for God to hear them, they needed to fast, they needed to put on ash clothing, they needed to humble themselves, all right? But in the New Testament, especially after the death of Jesus, we come to the realization that God lives in us. Praise the name of the Lord. And so there's no that distance in our mind anymore. But fasting is an important spiritual discipline. And I'd, I'd like to emphasize that fasting is an important spiritual discipline. Now, what are some of the wrong motivations for fasting? Like I said, please remind me that I want to do an extensive teaching on the subject of fasting. But this is just like a summarized teaching. This is key point. What is the wrong motivation for fasting? Matthew 6, 18, to be seen by others. Matthew 6, 18, is the wrong motive for fasting, to be seen by others. You know, the critical issue is not whether people know you're, you're fasting, but whether, you, you know, it's, it's, people can know that you're fasting, but you don't have to make them know. You know, most times you see people fasting, they look weak, they look tired. They're like, oh, what's wrong with you? you? say, man, I program. Oh, I did program. I did program. You don't need that. Praise God. Are you following this? There are certain times, even as a pastor of the local church, I'm fasting and then nobody is aware. Maybe probably just a staff and maybe my wife or my family. Sometimes my children are not even aware I'm fasting. You don't have to announce your fasting program. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, you see some people say 70 days on the mountain loading. You don't need to load it on social media. It's a wrong motivation already. Just stay, do what you need to do. Praise the name of the Lord. Or you see people just say, I just returned from a five days fast. Send me your prayer request. It's a wrong motive. People don't need to know that you're fasting. Luke chapter 18 verse 12 to 14. We don't need to fast to be justified by God. When that man was praying, he says, I fast twice a week. But the other man said, God be merciful to me a sinner. Praise the name of the Lord. Luke chapter 18, verse 12 to 14. We don't need to use our fasting as works before the Lord. Say, God, you see my fasting. You see my tears. No, we are justified by his grace. Come on, everybody say we are justified by the grace of Jesus. Are you following that now? So, our fasting is not, is not something we boast of. Are you following this? You know, that's why sometimes I find it funny. And if you observe, if you're in this ministry, I've never really done it. Say, I fast, a, I fast twice a week. I pay tight of all that I get. But the other one could not lift up his face to God. He said, be merciful to me, O sinner. And God justified him. That's why I really don't engage in the January fast. I'm sorry, uh, don't take it the other way. But I just feel that a lot of churches just get engaged in it. January, everybody's fasting. And by July, everybody has forgotten about fast. Everybody's eating to make up. You know, okay, they'll do around June, mid-year fast. Mid-year Thanksgiving, mid-year crossover. You know, sometimes you can just get in the religious bandwagon. And we don't you know, we don't know why we're doing what we're doing. You know, some of us fast so that God will forgive us of our sins. You know, we're almost using the fasting to tie God like almost like a hunger strike. Now, I'm going to emphasize that there's a difference between fasting and a hunger strike. Because I see some people, they are working heavy work, but their church is doing 100 days fasting. They go to the office. They are barely able to see the computer. They are just waiting for the time. They say, where do we break? Say, it's 5 o'clock. By 4.45, they say, bring the food. Bring bringing it. Don't open it. Just bring it first. <laughs> By 4.55, they have, they have the spoon. What is five? <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't. See, abstaining from food without spending time with God is hunger strike. You're wasting time. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's better you eat and you are relevant to your boss so that they can just give you promotion and a little pay rise. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Fasting is not just that you are not eating. So, some of us, when we say we have a fasting in church, we have fasting in church, oh yeah, let everybody fast. You go, just go and pack all your dirty clothes, you know? Pack your brother's own, pack your auntie's own, even the, 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 the wrapper of where your dog is staying. You say, don't worry, I'll help you wash today. But why? You are just looking for things to waste time. Just watching, watching. You say, ah, you did try to do this. Ah, bring more. Do you have more clothes? Even the clean clothes. You just wash the clean clothes. You are just burning time and you are waiting to break. No. Are you following what I'm saying? When we fast, we separate ourselves from something to give ourselves to something. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 
Most days, sometimes I start out on a day and I say, I want to fast. And something comes up, I need to go see someone. I mean, I just, I'm just running around the whole day. By 12 o'clock, you know what? <clears throat> I just cancel the fast for that day and just go and eat. Because I've spent almost half of the day and I've not spent quality time with God. Why punish myself? And, I mean, I'm not spending time with God. So fasting is not just that you look at today, I didn't eat. No. Because you realize that there are some days you work so hard, you even forget that you have not eaten till the evening. So, it's not just about staying from food. Listen to that carefully. Fasting is about staying from food so I can minister to God. Are you hearing this now? Fasting is about what? Staying from food so I can do what? Minister to God or spend time with God. Another motive is to be commended by God. We don't fast so we can be commended by God. I... Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 8. It's not about earning something. It's not that so God can commend us. So we say, wow, we are going into 40 days fast. We're going into, no, that's not the idea, to be commended by God. So we see that when the early church fasted, the Bible says, yeah, so it says, food, but food will not commend us to God. We're neither the worse if we do not eat, nor the better if we do eat. It doesn't commend us to God. Now, um, the early church, when they fasted, they called it ministering to the Lord. Acts chapter 13, verse 1 to 3. You see where the scripture talks about those who minister to the Lord. Now, I want you to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Let me show you what I, what I feel is one of, not what I feel, what the word says about something about fasting here. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Are you learning something this evening? Say amen if you are. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Let's look at verse twenty. 5, 1 Corinthians 9, 25 to 27. Look at this. Everyone who competes in the games exercise self-control in all things. Note that word. Exercise self-control in all things. Then they do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we are an unperishable one. Therefore, I run in such a way, observe that word, I run in such a way as not without aim, that's purpose, I box in such a way as not beating the air. Look at verse, verse 27. Come on, verse 27. But I do what? I didn't hear that word, but I do what? I discipline what? My body and make it more than what? My slave, so that after I've preached to others, I myself would not be what? Disqualified. So one of the key things we see that God is, uh, Paul is emphasizing here is the discipline of the body. And being temperate in all things because gluten is sin. Excessive eating is sin. So what does fasting do? Fasting helps me to discipline my body so that I can minister to the Lord. So I discipline my urge for food so I can spend some time in prayers. I can spend some time before the Lord, seeking the face of the Lord. It's about the discipline of your body. Are you following this now? It's about the discipline of your body. Now, John Wesley recommended two days a week fasting for ministers of the Methodist Church. What are some of the purpose why people fasted in the, early, uh, in the Bible? Ezra chapter 8 verse 21, they fasted to seek the direction of God. You can find that in Ezra 8 21 and 2 Chronicles chapter 20 verse 3. Ezra 8 21, 2 Chronicles 20 verse 3. Especially in the olden times, they spent time to do what? To seek the face of the Lord. Now, interestingly, Interestingly, let me, let, me, let me run through this and I'll give you a big Interestingly, there are certain concepts in the body of Christ that I completely do not agree with, both medically and spiritually. It's the concept of dry fasting. And I've said it many times. There's nothing like dry fasting. Your body actually needs water. Your body actually needs water. And don't embark in anything called dry fasting where you fast without taking water. It's just, it's just excessive show of religion. It's not recommended anywhere. Are you following what I'm saying? It's dangerous to your health. Medically, it's not advisable to even stay without water. So if you're fasting, make sure that you're taking water. Praise God. Now, your body requires water. Dehydration is not good for your body. Then we have what we call partial fast. Like I said, this is a long topic to be discussed. Because I know some of you dry fasting warriors now will raise your fangs. Ah, dry fasting. You know, when we even talk about this fasting thing, you know we don't fast like people of other religion. You go to India and see men who have not eaten for like a hundred days. Proper discipline. You know, they don't make noise about it. They just feel it's part of their requirement. Here, two days, you won't let people hear what. 
Daniel did a partial fast. The scripture talks about Daniel that he did not eat the king's food. This kind of fast is a fast where you don't eat uh, nice things. You restrict yourself to certain diets. I'm, 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 I'm going also to different types of fast now. Different kinds of fast. Okay? So, for instance, you can try to say, uh, let me use myself as an example. There was a time I did uh, a partial fast for over a period of time. And I was doing more fruits in the morning and in the evening and then maybe one meal a day. Someone say, well, that's not fasting you were eating. That's your business. <laughs> do you understand that? Because regularly I would do maybe bring me breakfast, maybe do lunch, you know, but I restricted myself to make sure that I was just doing fruits, you know, in between. You know, that's restraining. It's, it's a fast because it wasn't that Daniel stopped eating. Daniel just stopped eating choice food, good food, meat, you know, and all of that. So, there's also what you call media fast. Some of you need to fast from social media. To fast means to abstain. So, I do that, I do that, I think once a year or maybe, yeah, I think so. Sometimes for a month, I take out all social media from my phone. I fast from social media. So, I fast so that the time I'm spending on social media, I'm, I'm using it to the Lord. So, you can fast social media fast. Are you following this now? I'm going to show you from Isaiah 58. Fasting is not just living food. Fasting is separating yourself from something so you can consecrate yourself to something. That's what fasting is. Okay? So you can, sep you can fast from social media. You can fast from negative talking. You can tell yourself for the next one month, I will not use a word that is negative. You can fast from murmuring. So if you will complain a lot, complain about light, complain about church, complain about... You can tell yourself, I want to fast from wrong words. Are you following this now? So you separate yourself from wrong words so you can give yourself to right words. So you have several kind of fasts. You can fast wrong friends. You can fast a lot of stuff. But I think one of the most difficult ones we have issues with is the, is the one of food. Because our body craves food. Our body craves all these things that gives us pleasure. So the ability to discipline yourself from those things will help you in your work with God. You see, one thing you must learn is never to be under the control of anything. Praise God. You must learn never to be under the control of anything. Personally, in my life, I think maybe in the last two years, two and a half years thereabout, if my, if my, my calculation is correct, I, I mean, I, I drink Coke, but I can count the number of Coke I drink in a year, you know. I used to like Coke a lot. Maybe drink, 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 drink. You know, sometimes if you grow up without having certain things, when God begins to bless you and you begin to have a bit of resources, some of you like to compensate for your younger years. You know, for, for some of you, you always cried for ice cream. When your father was like, I need ice cream, they'll slap you. I need ice cream, they'll slap you. I need ice cream, they'll slap you. Now that you are old, you are even queuing with children to buy ice cream. You just feel that I need to reward. I have suffered. Do you, you understand that mentality? Like, ah, I have suffered. Bring meat. So, you know, you need to discipline yourself. So, I just told myself, no, this thing, yeah, it's not good for me in that sense and everything. And it's just that way. Many people cannot do that. Now, let me explain this to you. Any food you love, anything, food, drink, all those snacks that you love, discipline yourself. Fast from it. Just exercise control over your body. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Just tell yourself, you know, some of you every evening, it might be suya, it might be uh, granite, it might be shawarma, it might just be meat. If the meat is not up to three, your pot, you just get angry. Make it three. Make it three. It's three square meat. Make it three. <laughs> just uh, discipline yourself. What are you doing? You are putting your body under. You are temperate. Are you following what I'm saying? Come on, are you following this now? That discipline is essential, but it is not just discipline yourself for the sake of health. That is where fasting is different from um, dieting. Dieting is, I don't want to drink this so that I can be slim. We are not fasting for figure eight. We are fasting so we can spend time with God. Are you following what I'm saying? We are restraining. You realize that if you are doing proper fast, you don't have the energy to fight. Have you realized that? If you are fasting really, and somebody is hot, you say, no worry. <laughs> it's okay, go. Your flesh is subdued. Energy is not there. So rather you spend that time with the Lord. You spend that time with the Lord. So, um, how long should you fast? People ask me this all the time. How long should I fast? To be honest, that's between you and God. 
But I see a lot of people talk about the 40 days fast. And I would not recommend the 40 days fast. There were only three people who fasted 40 days in the Bible. Actually, if you study the Bible carefully, only one person fasted for 40 days. And that's Jesus. Moses was up on the mountain for 40 days. Exodus 34 verse 28. But he was in the presence of God. There was no way he could get hungry. He was in the presence of God for 40 days and 40 nights. There was no way he would get hungry in that glory cloud. <laughs> 1 Kings 19 verse 7, Elijah fasted for 40 days, but he actually did that after eating angel's food. The angel says, take, for the journey is long. After you have eaten angel's food, 40 days will be like two days. The one person who actually fasted for 40 days and became hungry was Jesus. In Matthew chapter 4 verse 1, you realize that, and, and I know this, this is not what is popularly taught in the church, but this is the truth. None of them, either Moses or Elijah, came down and the next statement about them was that they were hungry. Food was never mentioned. You know why? Because Moses was in the presence of God. His face began to shine. He was fed by the Shekinah glory of God. Elijah ate in just food. After 40 days, he wasn't hungry. The one person who came down and then they said was hungry after 40 days was Jesus because he was the one that actually fasted. Are you following this now? So, if somebody said, well, I want to go for 40 days and 40 nights. The next thing I said, like, are you going to have access to angel's food? And you know the reason why we push fasting to that extreme? Is because when a lot of ministers stand on the altar and they tell us how God gave them power, they refresh their fasting life. See, after waiting on God for 40, 45 days, 50 days, God visited me like this and power flow. And what we actually want it's not that we want to seek God. We are seeking power. That's why after people have fasted like that and they don't see any show of power in their lives, they get frustrated. We know you've been blessed by this telecast. To become a partner, please call plus 234-805-888-7575. Pastor Maxwell's messages are available in over a dozen books and a thousand audio and video formats. To purchase this title and other titles by Pastor Maxwell Ogaga, please call plus 234-805-888-7575 or send us an email, office at Pastor Max on NG. Also available are free downloads from www.thepastormax.ng. God bless you.